Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and welcome to episode 125 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my very best to answer them for you. Now I do have a bumper episode this week. When I sort of selected the questions initially that I was going to answer, there was over 30. So I do apologize if you're not included this week. I've had to whittle it down just a little bit, otherwise the video would go on forever. So I do apologize, don't let that deter you. Leave your questions for next week's episode in the comment section below and hopefully you'll be featured next week. As always, if you do happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like down below and we'll get straight on to the first question. Tyler Nichols says, question for next week. The newly announced TVC wave is set to come out around July, but all pre-order sites say they will be shipped out in early 2023. Is that a mistake or is this when we should be prepared to receive the orders? Keep up the great work. So in general, I'd probably ignore shipping dates that they say on retail sites. I mean, it's the date that they're given by Hasbro, but I think, you know, that's like a worst case scenario often we get them a lot earlier than they say. And even with Star Action figures in the UK over here, which is where I order most of my figures, they even have a statement on there that says something along the lines of that pre-order or shipping dates, you know, please ignore them basically, because at any time they could get the stock in and they could be charging you and shipping them out. So hopefully, you know, we will be getting them before 2023. I think the ones, some of the ones that they revealed just the other week are due out in essentially the next wave, the wave after the one with Yoda and the Death Watch Mandalorian and things like that in it. So Fennec Shand. So hopefully we're going to get that wave when it's said originally, which is around about July. The legend that is Des T, he says, hey boss, fantastic video as always. Question for next week. With all the figures coming out, pre-orders, etc., and also the figures you've chosen to send off to be graded, how do you keep yourself updated with all the comings and goings? Well, I've got to say, Des, it is tricky to say the least you've got to be sort of like on it haven't you on social media and checking out what people are saying looking up what yak face is saying because he seems to have his finger on the pulse um about what's coming out and when and with pre-orders and everything i mean i just have to search my emails really i put in the name of something that i've ordered and i look where i ordered it from apart from that i'm pretty unorganized i've got to say i don't keep a spreadsheet or anything like that i really should maybe but it's just not really ever been my style to be that organized but uh yeah, as the previous question said, with pre-orders and stuff, you don't know when they're coming and it can be a bit haphazard. But that's just the modern life collector, isn't it? Faceless Enigma 21 says, question for next week. With Shea Vizsla being reissued, do you see Starkiller and Bastilla Shan being reissued sometime soon as well? Also, do you see Hasbro trimming some accessories from Starkiller if and when he is reissued? Thanks. So here's Shea Vizsla. This is the original one. Thank you so much, Miles, for doing me a deal on that one, buddy. This was one of the last remaining cards I needed in the vintage collection. And I'm happy that she is being reissued because I'd like the loose figure as well. It's got a new head, which is great. I think that might be something that they do with Starkiller is give him a new head. I doubt that they would take any of the accessories away if they were to reissue him. I think it'd just be a straight reissue. And in terms of him being reissued with Bastilla Shan, you know, nothing's off the table. And at the end of the day, those are prime candidates because they've already been reissued once before into the 3.75 inch black series anyway. I think Starkiller is a character that people would want reissued. So yeah, it's their fair game. I could I could honestly see it happening. Chad Plew says, what do you think the chances of Hasbro doing a four pack of snow troopers like the rest of the other troop builder packs? Well, Chad, it all depends really because those four packs do tend to be of existing figures that we already have. So the question is, would you be happy for them to give you four of these or three of these and the captain, for example? This is a figure from, what, 2006, 2007? I personally wouldn't be happy with this one. I would want them to do an all-new Snow Trooper, in my opinion. There's a few things that I think they could improve with this figure, i.e. they could give him ball-jointed hips. The headgear on this one's always been a bit loose. I'm not even too sure if he needs a removable helmet, really. I think they could do something like they did with the Rogue One Stormtrooper with this one and really just give him, give him a complete update. I've never liked that wide stance that he has on the figure, so... You know, you know, would you be happy if they were to do that? Because if that's the case, before they even think about doing a four pack of this figure, they would need to, you know, release a brand new version of him. Let him sell through for a while, like they've done with the Death Troopers, and then give you a four pack. So that's how I think it'll work. The Kirby Mock says, this is what Sundays are all about. Boss Bounty videos. Thank you so much, my friend. Question, is there any vintage collection figures you would happily trade against a Black Series figure due to the inferior stroke superior quality keep the great videos coming. There is one that springs to mind and you know usually I would always want the 3.75 because that's what fits in with my collection so I'd probably never do this trade 
But, you know, when you look at the Endor layer that we got, which was just sort of like a slight update to the 2004 Vintage Trilogy Collection version, and then you saw the one they got in the Black Series. Oh, man. And they got her twice, didn't they? They got her in the box and in that set. That's that's a killer for me, that one. And there is just no comparison between those two figures. Whereas, you know, figures that are coming out these days, like this guy, for example, I don't really think the Black Series one is any better than that one, particularly sitting there. It's just a smaller scale in the 3.75. Rene Kevin Lewis says, love the channel. Do you think they'll ever make an ET figure on a vintage collection card or Black Series ever? It's been 20 plus years and we've never seen one on a Star Wars anything. I suspect that has something to do with licensing. For anyone that doesn't know, I'm sure you all do, E.T. or the species of E.T. featured in a blink and you'll miss it scene in one of the prequels. I actually can't remember which one it was, but basically it's in the auditorium, isn't it? In the opera house, if that's what you want to call it, where they have all their council meetings and what have you. For a brief second, you see one of the pods has a bunch of E.T. running around. And I suspect that it has something to do with licensing that they can't make toys for that, I guess. Callum Cattell says, question for next week. Out of all the Grogu's released, which one is your personal favourite? Keep up the great work. So I've got to say, I think the new one, the most latest one that came with Ahsoka is now my favourite. I I just much prefer the sculpt. It's him sitting with his like uh, cloak thing all scrunched up. So he looks a little bit smaller, but I love the way he's got his arms reached out like that. You can have him sort of like wanting to be picked up or using the force, whichever way you want him. And I put him in the little crib there because I prefer him in, in that than the one that you got with the crib. I think it just looks better, but... Um, if you haven't checked out that review of the Ahsoka and Grogu, uh, that's on the channel if you need to. And the Luke Jedi here, this is a brand new Luke Jedi that I got from Chris at Rogue Five Toys. Rogue Five Toys are on Facebook if you weren't aware of them. They do awesome deals on vintage Star Wars stuff. So um, this guy was an overstock Luke, so I've upgraded. So he's, you know, his limbs have never been moved, uncracked if you want to say it like that. No paint issues or anything like that. So really really happy with that one so thank you so much for that chris phoenix richardson says happy sunday i have a three-part question for a new collector why does the vc numbering exist why do we care about it and would you care if they stopped it thank you in advance i get this question a lot and i'm hoping to direct them to this video whenever i get the question well first of all it's not just the vintage collection that has numbering the black series has it as well loads of other lines going way way back have had numberings as well like the saga collection legacy collection loads of them have had them um, even if you go right back to vintage Kenner days on the back of the card all the figures are numbered not necessarily numbered individually on each card but the grid showing all of the figures is numbered so I guess it's done because it's a way of making you collect them all it's a marketing strategy I guess and it obviously it seems to work because there are some people out there that get some serious OCD when the numbering is incorrect or they get it wrong or they number two figures with the same number you know they get some serious OCD and I, I guess I'm not one of those people I wouldn't really care if the numbering went anywhere really I think it's just quite nice to know what number a figure is in the line I guess and yeah I wouldn't care if they stopped it but that's why they have it Manuel Vicario says hi there BB what is your favorite figure you've been able to find in the wild that you didn't think you could find well this happened to me most recently actually at Echo Live where I went the other day and it's a modern figure and this is one that I've been looking for on eBay for ages and just always thought it's far too expensive and it is Pablo Jill from the Black Series and I will be opening this up on a video with my son where we open up loads of other figures and yeah great looking Jedi always wanted this one but as I say it's always been too expensive and I got this for an absolute bargain with two other Black Series figures for £20 and you know for the prices that I've seen this go for on eBay, I thought I got an absolute bargain. Cowabunga Comics says, Hey Bosk, I'm a new subscriber. Love your channel, man. Great content. Thank you so much, my friend. I myself recently just got into collecting Star Wars vintage collection figures and was wondering, do you think Hasbro will release Luke Skywalker with Grogu from Mandalorian Season 2? Uh, it would be great to have another Luke come out. Yes, it would. And yep, absolutely. On the most recent live stream, they pipelined that that figure is coming um, if you missed out on that live stream you want a recap check out my video I always do recaps on the live streams and what's coming out of all the reveals and everything I will put a link just up there a little card for you that you can click on to watch that video after this one Esteban Chavez says howdy BB thank you for your videos question for episode 125 with the 40th anniversary of Jedi next year do you think it's possible Hasbro will release a black series Tatooine skiff like they did with Dak and the Snowspeeder, or maybe a re-release of the Emperor's Palpatine with his throne. 
I don't think they'll do the throne again. I think they've done the Emperor in the archive line, I do believe. So I doubt that they'll re-release that thing again. And I think it was an exclusive in the in the first place, wasn't it, with the throne. In terms of the skiff, the skiff is something that they could do in the Black Series in terms of size. I think it'd work quite well. And if any time's a good time to do it, it would be for the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Can I see them doing it? I'd have to say no. And it would be purely for the reason that you don't have the characters to go on it. You know, you don't have a Kithaba, you don't have the Weequays. It would be very difficult to have that skiff without any of those characters. Um, even in the vintage collection, we're missing Velcan Tazeri. So for me, it would be difficult for them to do that. But you never know, <laughs> they, they might release it. It's definitely the sort of size vehicle that would work in the Black Series. Any bigger than that, and I think, yeah, it's just not a done thing. Nathan Rosario says, what do you consider to be the absolute worst cardback images in TVC? For me, one of the worst is Kithaba's cardback. I find it hard to believe that there were no high quality reference photos of the character for Hasbro to use at the time. I would have even preferred a grainy still from the movie over the heavily photoshopped, horizontally flipped image of Barada that we got. To be honest, I've never thought of the Kithaba cardback in that way, I must admit, but now you've said it, I can, I can completely see your point of view. But when I think of really bad card backs, you know, I always think of this one. I think of the Han Solo Stormtrooper, although that is a, a great figure. It's a shame about the card back on that one. Um, then I think of the Han Solo from Solo is a is a really bad card back. Those three really stick out for me. The Leia and the Han Solo, just because they're a bit dark and grainy. And the Han Solo one, because it's the worst Photoshop ever basically it's awful marco says tim do you think the prototype chew will be the last or will we be getting more personally i love them um i i don't know for certain but i would say that they probably will do more of those things i think they sell quite well don't they otherwise they wouldn't have done four of them i personally think and i think i said this in my roundup video that i think maybe four's enough of them now i think i'm i've had it with those now they're pretty cool and everything but they are a bit gimmicky aren't they really and I think the Vader one was a good one. The Fett was a good one. Any more than that, and we, you know, it's getting a bit much for me now. But I can understand why people like them. I know Usual Mike likes them over in Oz. He doesn't. He he really likes them. So so there is a market for them. And I think, as I said, they sell quite well. So whenever something sells quite well, then Hasbro will will uh, make more of it. That is for sure. Cisco Deer says, "Hey BB, love the content question for next week. If you have the time, what is your favourite American TV show?" My favourite British TV series is Breeders, despite language, I enjoy it. Do you know when season three starts or has it been cancelled? I've got to say, I've never seen that show and I don't really know anything about it or when the next series is coming, so I do apologise. In terms of American series, man, there's been some amazing ones over the past that I've absolutely loved and binge-watched. The Sopranos, Boardwalk Empire, Ozark, to name a few. The one that I always go back to is The American Office, and for someone that loves the UK office... When they first did the American Office, I was like, no, this is not going to be good. And the first series, especially the first episode, were pretty bad. But when they got trying to replicate what the UK did and made the characters actually have their own personalities and own characters rather than replicating characters from the UK version, the, the show just went into its own. And nine series, absolutely amazing. Absolutely love The Office. Mighty Makoko says, question for next week. Do you think the retro collection is here to stay for a while? It certainly seems so with the rumours of a Kenobi wave and a Return of the Jedi next year. So I was wondering if you think we could ever get the Rebels crew in the retro line. I'm not too sure about the Rebels crew. Uh, I mean, that would infuriate vintage collection collectors, wouldn't it? That uh, have been wanting those characters for a while. So I, I, I can't see them doing them in the retro collection. However, the retro collection is here to stay. You're absolutely right. There is going to be... Um, a Kenobi wave that I think that's been leaked already and from what I understand it there's going to be a Return of the Jedi wave next year as well uh, which will be which will be good because I know a lot of people like them horror fan says question for next week is little boss still collecting Star Wars coins I have some I would like to send him he does indeed he loves the coins uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you which ones he does and doesn't have unfortunately uh, he doesn't have that book that they go in but um, yeah he still collects them so if you did want to send him to them that's entirely up to you my friend and I'm sure you'll appreciate it but um you know, you don't have to send anything if you don't want to, but thank you so much. Kev Cox says, hey there, boss, loving the series. Question for next week. With the new recent wave of TVC figures having the thicker card back, do you think Hasbro have finally put to bed the question as to whether they are going to enforce their zero plastic packaging policy on its merchandise from 2023? The new card stock suggests they do now have carded collectors in mind, and this would suggest the TVC range with the plastic bubble would now be protected going forward. 
I I really don't know. I don't think it's as clear cut as that. I think that the cardstock thing has been planned for you know a while, and they've only just been able to implement it. The plastic thing is a worry. I've got to admit, it is a worry, and it's it's still worrying me. Nothing has happened to suggest that I don't think that this is the route they're going to take, and it scares me. I must admit, from a collecting point of view, um, I worry about what they plan to do it and how they plan to do it. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens, but. 2023 is not far away and we'll just have to wait and see what they do but um i don't really think the thicker card stock um necessarily impacts that i've got to say robert westwood says thank you for another great video question for next week considering the secrecy that disney has regarding the new figures thus with the subsequent lag time between the shows and figure releases usually about a year do you think that this would be a good year for hasbro to focus more on completing the 96 as well as doing something to acknowledge the 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones. I don't know what plans Hasbro has for the newer series figures, but I will not be expecting any Kenobi, Ahsoka or Andor figures before next year. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Ahsoka, I don't think Ahsoka's even coming out until 2023, so I, I very much doubt we'll have any of those figures anyway. But in terms of uh, Kenobi, I, I really do think we can expect some Kenobi figures this year. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. If we look at The Mandalorian, when did The Mandalorian air originally? It was it? November I think it was and I think we had at least three figures in what February I think somebody had their hands on them most people got them in April May so what's that five six months so I think you know if it's out in May I think we could expect some figures October November time I really do not many but I think we'll get some within one of the waves and if you look at the list of figures on Yak Face's website you'll see that there's some missing and that's because those particular figures are the ones that are highly protected and Disney do their utmost to stop leaks happening so let's fingers crossed let's see what happens Dan Dunkel says another great video Tim what do you think the chances are of seeing characters from the High Republic books in TVC they haven't done any print characters in years maybe a HasLab or is it just wishful thinking on my part love the channel keep them coming cheers from Chicago I think when it comes to the vintage collection you they kind of need to be in live action of some description or a TV show like the Clone Wars I think if you want High Republic figures, then we need to see them on screen in some form. I think that's the way it goes these days. There's just far too much for them to do, for them to just randomly pick a character from a comic or a book and then go, here you go, here he is. I think maybe video games is the is the limit on that sort of thing in this day and age. I know they've done comic packs before and things like that, but I think most of those were repaints of other figures in weird comic colors, weren't they, essentially? so. Let's see what happens, but I think there might be a High Republic film or TV show in the near future. I think there's something maybe even dropping about it at Star Wars Celebration. We'll have to wait and see. But the moment there's like a TV show or a film like that, then you can start thinking about the figures. All right, guys, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have a question for next week's episodes, please leave it in the comment section below. And once again, I do apologize if I didn't get around to your question. There was loads of questions last week and I, I love having so many to pick from it's awesome so please keep them coming thank you to my patreon supporters and channel members thank you all for watching and we shall see you on the next one